So some of you may have joined us last year where we um, actually had a webinar specifically introducing our product SmarterWorks. If you haven't seen it, you can always go back and watch the recording, of course. But for today, we um, will be introducing SmarterWorks 2.0, which is our latest release. In fact, SmarterWorks 2.0 was released just this week. So we'll be taking you on a tour of the new enhancements or designed to make collaboration even easier. With me today to present um, our session is our Chief Solution Strategist, Gary Johnson. So Gary is based out of our Melbourne office and he's responsible for leading innovation and new market activity um, at Esri Australia. So this includes in, uh, identifying new partner opportunities, but also testing, prototyping, and also developing of new offerings. One of which, of course, is SmarterWorks. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Gary. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Laura. And it's great to be here again to talk about what's new in SmarterWorks. For anyone who um, is brand new to SmarterWorks themselves, then do please go and find last year's webinar where we introduced SmarterWorks and how to use it. Today, I want to go through a few of the new features. The first I want to look at is Live Connect. This has been asked for for a long time to be able to directly connect SmarterWorks to your GIS system. I'll also look at new ways to upload data, a really exciting new third-party data set we've introduced called Planeter, an API for uh, developers to use against SmarterWorks, and also a few more enhancements along the way. Before I do that, I would just like to comment on who's using SmarterWorks today. Uh, the, the slide that I've got up with the logos on it is difficult to keep up to date as it's growing all the time, but this is the latest version that I've got. And as you can see, we've now got a lot of different water authorities, local governments, um, and state government departments in there. And this is really exciting because, as you know, SmarterWorks is about collaboration. And the more organizations using it, um, the more value you all get from it. So uh, really exciting to see it continue to grow. Okay, so let's start with Live Connect. Live Connect allows you to schedule data synchronization between your GIS services and SmarterWorks. So you don't need to do the exporting of data to a file and uploading into SmarterWorks anymore. Currently, this is supporting ArcGIS Enterprise and ArcGIS Online with OGC WFS services coming soon. I wanna walk you through a quick demo of how to use Live Connect. So from uh, the SmarterWorks screen, go to the Data tab, as you would have done for uploading data, and you'll now find a new option called Live Connect. And clicking on that takes us to the configuration screen. The first thing we need to do is enter the URL of your ArcGIS server using the standard ArcGIS REST services description. Once you've done that, if your server has got authentication enabled, you'll be asked to enter a username and password. This is optional, and if you don't enter any credentials, it'll just access anonymous services only. And note here, I'm using an ArcGIS online uh, service endpoint, but you can use your own ArcGIS server. Once we've entered our credentials, we have to verify. And that verify step makes sure that we can log on. And we'll also go and um, fetch the list of services that are available on your ArcGIS server. Once we've got that list, we can just type in the name of what we want, and it'll pull up the services that are there. Select the layer that contains your projects or exclusion zones. And the next step is to do some field mapping. Now your fields might not have the same names as SmarterWorks is expecting, so you can map each of the fields in your feature layer to those in uh, SmarterWorks. Also, if you don't have um, values for perhaps the work classification, you can set a default for that. Also, if you want to limit the data that's pulled into SmarterWorks, you can enter an SQL expression here that will say only load um, 
projects that have got a certain status, for example. Once we've done that, we hit the validate data button. This is going to go off and now check all the data in your feature layer to make sure that it is compliant with the Smarter Works schema. If there are any warnings or errors, they'll be displayed at this point, and you get an option to fix that up again. In this example, I'm not going to load any exclusion zones, so I go straight into my matching rules. Exactly the same rules here as you had for uploading data. And then I want to choose how often this is going to be uh, synchronized. I can choose to run daily, weekly or monthly. If I do that, I choose uh, with weekly or monthly which day of the week or day of the month it should run. Here I'm just choosing once. What that means is that it's going to automatically run as soon as I save this. And then whenever I choose to manually cause it to rerun, but I'm not setting a schedule, that's a, an option that you might want to look at. Now that we've finished it, it's going to the ArcGIS server, pulling all that data in and loading it into SmarterWorks, running the validations and publishing the data. And there we go. We've just published 464 projects that started off in my ArcGIS server. So Live Connect is a, a convenient way of getting data into SmarterWorks if you don't want to do the export and upload. Some things to note. Uh, the scheduled data updates will occur between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. in the morning. We do that so that we're not um, calling your server during the day when it might be uh, in use. You nominate who receives confirmation. And you can always do sync now to run Live Connect at any time of your choosing. Also, some new upload options in 2.0. Um, you can now upload a CSV file. So if you don't have any spatial data, um, you can load it from CSV. And you can also load points and lines. So if your projects are represented by linear features, then you can load those and SmarterWorks will deal with that for you. You can check out the help site for more information on those options. So a new feature in SmarterWorks 2 is integration to Planeter. Now Planeter is an application and data set of development applications taken from councils across Australia, and we're making that directly within SmarterWorks so that you can view descriptions and documents of all those development applications around your planned works. So I'd now like to introduce Hilary Chapman. Hilary is the founder of Planeter and responsible for leading the development and marketing of this service to track development applications. As a senior freelance environmental consultant, delivering major infrastructure development for more than a decade, Hillary saw at first hand the amount of effort that goes into doing basic research in both the government and private sectors, which led her to develop Planeta. So, Hillary, over to you. Thanks, Gary. Well, there are over 500 councils in Australia. Just in metropolitan Sydney and Melbourne alone, there are over 60. So if you have to do research on planning applications, particularly across multiple councils, that can be time consuming and tedious. When you go online, each council uses its own system and the information is usually presented in a list and not in the geographic context of, of the neighborhood. So it's really hard to see uh, what it actually means. So to make it easier for planning professionals, um, we created Planeter. It does a very simple thing it puts development applications from many councils all on one map. It allows our planning professionals who are clients to do a number of things. They can look at precedents, so they can look at similar applications in the area that they're interested in, perhaps something similar to what they're working on. Uh, they can get a single click download of all the documents for a particular application. Uh, so to, just to give you an example, one of our clients had a, an application that had 3,000 associated documents, which would have been a lot of individual point and click and save. And uh, they got all of that just with, with one click down into a downloaded into a zip file onto their onto their um, desktop. Very, very quick and easy. Within Planeta, you can also um, track individual applications. So you can subscribe to a particular application and then you get an email notification anytime there's a change in status or an uploaded document with respect to that application. The other thing that our clients find really useful is that you can, in Planeta, track areas of interest. So you can draw a shape 
onto the onto the map, or you can upload a shape file. Um, and then rather than having to go in and doing manual research about what's changed, uh, you'll just get an email update of notification of any changes in that area of interest, um, all from the uh, the comfort of your uh, of your uh, seat at your desk. You don't have to do all of that work um, yourself. So Planet has been live for about um, a year now, um, just coming up for a year, and this is some of the things that our clients have told us about it. Uh, they've told us that it eliminates countless hours of research. Um, I've got a client that's got a, a shape that includes half of Brisbane and all of the Gold Coast, uh, and she uses that for a regular uh, report she does on, on a particular state of the market. Um, and uh, she said that it used to take literally countless hours, and she's now down to five minutes uh, worth of work per day, so an enormous benefit for, for that client. It also allows clients to deliver services that they couldn't deliver before, so one of our clients was able uh, to deliver a service for their client that previously would have been prohibitively expensive because of the amount of time the research would have taken, and, and now they're able to do that research really quickly. Of course, it also able, enables them to have a quick look at an area and be in the know in an instant. Um, but one of our clients also has um, a linear asset that's 500 kilometers long that covers multiple jurisdictions. They need to make sure that there isn't inappropriate development occurring uh, near that asset, and the council doesn't always let them know when there's an application uh, near that asset. And so they use Planeter to actually track planning applications occurring near their asset so that they can make sure that their asset is protected. So in a nutshell, most importantly, Planeter helps um, our clients plan strategically and also to protect their valuable assets. We're really excited um, about this integration between Planeter and um, SmarterWorks, and I'm really excited to see um, how you're going to use it, provide additional context for your Capital Works programs. Uh, Gary's going to give you a demonstration of uh, Planeter in SmarterWorks. Thanks, Hilary. Yeah, so anyone that might have signed into SmarterWorks within the last 30 minutes will have seen a whole new icon appear on the navigation bar at the top, and this is Planeter. We've integrated the service that Hillary's developed into Planeter, into SmarterWorks, so that you can view it directly within our application. So let's have a look. What we're seeing here is a load of clusters that show where development applications are within this area. I've stopped some filters on the filter bar to I can say the type of application and the dates around it. And then as I zoom in, I'll start to see individual parcels that are highlighted with where those applications are. And clicking on a parcel reveals information about the application that's in progress. If there's more than one, I can also quickly access a menu showing all of the available ones at that place. So let's have another look in another area. If we go into Sydney, here again, some more applications. Clicking on them here, we now start to see more information, including lists of documents, and also a link that will jump us straight to the City of Sydney site. And that's one of the great things about Planeter. It's gathering information from all of the different councils, but also giving you the direct links back to that council and back to the documents that they've stored. Looking up here in Brisbane, again, we see the clusters, we zoom in, see the individual parcels highlighted, and we can also open those documents directly from within this interface. So there I am looking at one of the documents belonging to the development application. As well as this Planeter view, we've integrated Planeter directly into the main search window so that you can see the Planeter data alongside your own Capital Works plan or your own assets that are in here. It's only available when you're zoomed quite far in, but once you do zoom in, you'll be able to again access all of that same information. So we're really excited to have added Planeter. We believe that it's um, a really uh, relevant service to add to the planning works that you're all doing. It is a premium subscription service, and we're making it available for free for all SmarterWorks users until the end of May. Its coverage is expanding on a, on a weekly basis and currently covers around about 200 councils. Um, 
As Hillary mentioned, there is additional functionality available at planetary.com, including being able to uh, set areas of interest and track applications. But we'd, we'd really love to hear how you use Planeto in your workflows, um, so please do let us know. Okay, the next thing is the Software Developers API. We've now published an API that allows developers to add custom applications around SmarterWorks. We've made available to you the ability to manage users, to create and edit data, to do publishing workflows, and also to query opportunities and all the projects and so on that are there. And this has been asked for so that, um, for example, you might want to take your data directly out of your work, works management system into SmarterWorks without going via a GIS or some other tool on the way through. To use the uh, API, you'll need to get some API keys, and they're available under organization settings in, in SmarterWorks. Create that new login, and you'll get the ID and secret that a developer will use to access SmarterWorks. So the actual API can be found at developer.smarterworks.com.au, and here we give you all of the endpoints that you can work with, including descriptions and how to use them, example requests, and example responses. So I just want to show you, using Postman, which is a development tool for uh, working with APIs, how this might work. So here, first of all, getting an access token using the ID and secret. So I make a call to request that token, and I get back at that token, which I can now use to pass in a header to my other calls. So, for example, if I want to uh, get a list of all the users that are in my organization, I'll send that same request, passing in the access token, and I'll get back a list of users. And I can do the same with searching for um, projects as well. So if I use the search um, call, I'll get back my projects, including all the geometries of them as well. So to find out more about the API, please go to developer.smarterworks.com.au, where you'll find out um, all about how to work with that. Now, something that's not necessarily new, but we've asked, been asked for a few times, is easier ways to create data. So I really want to point out this helpful video that was produced around creating SmarterWorks projects with ArcGIS Online. Following this simple guide, which lasts about five or six minutes, it shows you how to use ArcGIS Online to take a data template for SmarterWorks and sketch out your projects and exclusion zones, and then export that for adding into SmarterWorks. So for anyone that's um, looking for easier ways to manage that project data, then please do take a look at this video. And just a few more quick enhancements that were added in 2.0 as well. And many of these came directly from feedback we had from users. Um, you know, we found that feedback really useful and it allowed us to set the roadmap. First one is we were asked, can we display the areas of interest that we've drawn as a contextual layer on the search map? And now you absolutely can. Um, go to the map settings in the tray and you'll find areas of interest as an option there. You can turn them on and they're displayed um, as you see there on that map. We really wanted to uh, improve the way reporting worked in SmarterWorks, so we've built in a whole new reporting engine, giving a lot more flexibility around the types of reports we can do. And you'll find the UI slightly different, um, but you also get new options like being able to do your own custom filters, uh, your own custom sorting, by clicking on the column headers in any of those report tables. You also get the option to export to a lot more formats like Excel and PDF and even PowerPoint for some of these reports. Another one we were asked for was um, to really compress the emails that you get listing out new opportunities. The feedback we had was that sometimes you will get hundreds of opportunities being created when you load new data, and the emails were just too big and long-winded to work with. So it's a new tabular format for those to make that easier for you. Also added some new options for email, um, and you'll find these under your user profile if you click on your 
your uh, icon menu and select edit profile. So you can choose now to be copied on any emails that are sent when you send a conversational message to someone. And this means that then it's easy to continue that conversation using email rather than back through SmarterWorks. You can also choose to be notified whenever one of your items is archived or when people add notes to your items. They're all defaulting to no, and so if you want to use those, go to Edit Profile and set them to yes. We also continue to work on performance, and so you'll find now that searching um, is a lot faster, um, and so is publishing. So we've really done a lot of work there around making sure that you get that smooth experience that you expect when you're working with the map. To find out more, do check out the release 2.0 uh, release notes that you'll find at help.smarterworks.com.au. And also at that help site, search for videos and you'll find about uh, half a dozen different how-to videos that we've put up on YouTube, uh, which will guide you through some of the main features. I did mention that uh, a lot of those new features came from our users. If you do have ideas yourself about things to add, please go to the Enhancement Requests form on the um, help.smarterworks.com.au site and submit those ideas, and we'd love to have a look at those and work on them. And that's a quick run through of what's new in SmarterWorks 2.0. And with that, um, I'll go back to Laura, who's celebrating her birthday. Uh, thanks, Gary. I might just see what questions we've got. Um, so, um, if you haven't already um, posted a question and you're, and you're wanting to ask something from Hilary or Gary, you can still do that now. You can see the, um, the little panel up on screen. There are a couple of questions that I'll go to first that have come through. Um, first one uh, was from Matthew. So, um, this is actually for you, Hilary. And the question was, you mentioned the coverage for Planeta data, but um, can you sort of be specific on where the coverage is? Yes, thanks, Laura. So um, at the moment, we've got um, uh, Queensland um, covering over 95% of the population in Queensland in, in the metropolitan areas. Uh, we've got uh, New South Wales. We've got a few more still to add in New South Wales, but metropolitan areas again and, and surrounds. Um, also Victoria, um, the whole of similar uh, metropolitan areas plus surrounds. Um, and also the whole of South Australia and the whole of the Northern Territory. Thanks, Hilary. I've um, got another one here, so Gary, this will be for you, uh, from Joe, who asks, um, do you have any um, services around um, getting set up with SmarterWorks? Um, I, I guess that's relating to um, whether we can help people get started with SmarterWorks. Yeah, so, um, yeah, absolutely. And this is definitely what some of um, the SmarterWorks customers have, have asked for, is to, for us to help them um, setting up their data, getting it structured correctly, work out how to export that data, and so on. So definitely something we can do. And if it's something you're interested in, then um, please get in touch with either your account manager or myself, and we can get that sorted. Okay, um, so I've got another question that's come through. Um, so is there any feasibility to include more fields than the default three field names for their own consumption? Yep, so SmarterWorks allows you to set up what we call custom fields. And those custom fields you define in your organization settings. You can add up to three for a project and up to three for an exclusion zone. And that's where you might want to add your own private information such as internal um, attributes. That is all kept private, so it'll only be displayed to users within your organization. Um, it won't be seen by other organizations looking at your data. And that will be able to be used either through the upload method or through the um, uh, Live Connect. And if you use Live Connect when you do the field mappings, you'll see those additional custom fields displayed there as well. So, good question. Okay. And just one last one, just to confirm um, if I'm wanting to, but I don't have SmarterWorks already. Um, and I'm wanting to go and sort of download it, or you know, where's the best place to go to go and get that? Yes, yeah, so go to SmarterWorks, that's smarterwx.com.au, and on that page you'll find a um, uh, I'm interested button, which will allow you to register interest for it, or if you're a local council, it'll even allow you to actually go ahead and, and buy SmarterWorks straight away. So yeah, head to smarterworks.com.au 